you know what that feels mm-hmm. like. And if you can oh, dial yeah. in your feeling and your actual analytical side. And so I guess that's, that, that, that's the thing too, is taking the analytical side of your brain and your emotional side and balancing those out. Mm -hmm. So that's being confidently competent to me. And that's where you can get your best races. Welcome to the I Race Like a Girl podcast, where a professional triathlete and an age grouper talk all things sport and life. We're here to educate and enlighten, but most importantly, to keep it real. We are your hosts, Amy Woods and Angela Nate. Let's race to it. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to the I Race Like a Girl podcast. Angela and I are here today to talk about how you race with your head and your heart and how to when to race with your head and your heart in order to maximize your, your race results and how you get the most out of your racing. And we have a lot of experience with racing (laughs) with our head and our heart and even what that means racing with your intuition, with your gut, racing smart, racing strong. And we're going to cover all different scenarios to help you identify maybe when you're going a little bit too much with your heart when you have to pull back and when you're kind of overthinking or underthinking. Mm -hmm. Um, So let's get it started. What do you want to start with? What is when I said this to you, because this was my idea like a couple days ago. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I actually was listening to a podcast and they said, I forget what the line is they said. And I was like, oh my gosh, I, you know, I remember the first time I paced, like I raced Mm -hmm. very smart in Mm -hmm. a run. So when I say, when you think of racing with your head and your heart, what do you think of? Like, what's the first thing? What did you think of first? I was like, oh, I could talk about this forever. Yeah. <laughs> um, that was one thing I did say. Uh, so I, I was I was just thinking, like, I look back at all the races I've done. Mm-hmm. When when you first start, you basically don't know anything. Right. So you're, you are racing by heart mm-hmm. because you don't have any reference point to what that means. And mm-hmm. so I look back at my very first triathlon or even like 5Ks and 10Ks as a kid, like it was all hard. Like mm-hmm. you just go as hard as you can. Yeah, you go as hard as you can. Um, and then over the years that 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 changes, you learn a little bit more about metrics. You learn about the science of stuff. Um, I mean, there's been races where I've I've really dialed in the data and it it totally, like I had a DNF for some of those. Oh, okay. And then other we'll times talk about where that. the heart... Mm-hmm like racing just by feel and how I felt and, and pushing myself internally, I guess, Mm -hmm. is where I see that. And that's kind of where I really try to dive into to this day and use the head Mm -hmm. at the same time, because I think racing itself is all about decision-making. You get to these points and you have to make it, make a decision, you know, Um, like, and you always have to be on, on the ball with your pacing, what you're drinking and eating. Um, and like, that's all things that you have control over and that's what you need your head for. But the heart is what is like that, that internal motivational power source, you Mm -hmm. know, that I think gets you to the finish line. Um, so, I mean, this, this can go in so many different directions. (laughs) Yeah. And I think one of the things, the reason why I want to talk about it right now is because racing season has begun. Mm-hmm. And we spend, especially in the beginning of the season, we spend a lot of time talking to our athletes about race plans, especially mm-hmm. for the first, for some athletes, it's their first, you know, half marathon or, you know, the, their first half Ironman, their first sprint race. And people want a plan. And I mm-hmm. totally understand why we literally spend every day looking at a training plan. Mm -hmm. What do I have to do? What heart rate do I have to hit? Mm -hmm. How much fuel do I need to take? We ask them to write down, what did, what did you hydrate with? Like, let's get this. What, how did this feel? Heart rate, power. And you know, we have, we train a lot by metrics. Sometimes Mm -hmm. we don't, sometimes Mm -hmm. we just train by feel depending on the day. But so when you go into a race, you want that plan and those metrics. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's funny because Yes, we for many races you give a plan, but then the flip side, like the next text or the next thing you talk about is you're just going to know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, there are times of course we use those metrics to hold us back, especially in long course racing. Like a lot of those you really do have to race smart, which we'll get into, but it's such a fine balance of when to use that brain and when to just go by your intuition and your gut and take a risk. And I feel like we've been living, I've been living in that with athletes starting um, their race season. Mm -hmm. And of course, as you get more experience, you don't have to talk 
athletes through races as much if they've done, you know, seven 70.3s or mm-hmm. four half marathons and things like that, but they still want reminders. So I want to know from you, what was the first race where you, I want to start with the head. What was the first race where you felt any kind of race mm-hmm. that you raced smart? Like you really, well, it's funny when you say head, mm-hmm. because like when I look at things, mm-hmm. what really pops out when, when we, when you, when we just started this uh-huh. podcast was when I was at 70.3 worlds in Canada, it was in Montreal. Mm-hmm. Now, when and was this? This was 2012, mm-hmm. 2013. Okay. Ready to roll. Yeah. And we went up there, um, my ex back then. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was with a new coach. Uh, and he gave me power numbers. It was my first kind of time using power. Yeah. Okay. So to me, using those types of metrics was me going in, like using my head. And yeah. maybe oh. it wasn't smart, but well, in know. the end it was. I, I had very specific parameters. So I got out of the swim. First of all, I swam terrible. And so that got into my head right mm-hmm. away. But then I was supposed to hit a certain power wattage. Okay. And I've never raced that way before, ever. I've always just went out and raced. Yeah. I never looked at numbers. I never looked at heart rate. Change, change coaches. And it was more like, okay, this is what you can hit. This mm-hmm. I could not hit the number and I got in my head so oh. much. I literally, I tried and tried and tried and, um, I couldn't get it. And I completely DNF'd. I, oh, I really? just stopped. Yeah. Did and you I've never done that? So did you, were you though, were you burning yourself out trying to hit those power numbers or did you actually just be like, I can't hit it and I'm going to race the way I want? Like, no, I was, uh, I, what was going on in my head was like, I, I don't even know what the power number was. I yeah. It doesn't remember. matter. Yeah. But I just, I couldn't, it was like 20 Watts off or something yeah, yeah. and it could have been just the power meter wasn't yeah, calibrated. Yeah, yeah. Who knows? I mean, it was all new to me and I just, I just felt like I couldn't do it. And mm-hmm. so I just it just it totally derailed me did you finish the bike and I didn't even finish the bike I did one lap yeah and you know and then now now that I think of it another DNF I did was when I first did my first I like semi ITU race and I was dead last in the water (laughs) and uh my parents were watching um first like they don't watch many of my races but it was probably like my only race they watch and I was dead last and it was an IT race, which I mean, I'm not a swimmer. <laughs> you got to be races. super fast. And, and like, I, like I was just jumping into mm-hmm. the ranks of pro and I, I mean, I was terrible <laughs> and I, and it was a, it was a lapped, a lapped bike. Mm-hmm. And so uh, there were tons of corners. Oh yeah. And so every time I went to a corner, I didn't see anybody, but apparently they were just there. They were right there and they turned the corner. So every time I went to a corner to turn, I didn't see anybody. So mm-hmm. it got in my head, but I was racing completely by, by heart. I was just trying to go as hard as I could, mm-hmm. you know, and I, and I DNF after there. So I think what I'm trying to say is like, there's pros and cons to both. Mm-hmm. And I think there's a balance there. Uh, but to get back to your question of racing smart, I would say, comes with definite experience of knowing your metrics and yeah. if you're going to use those because when I say head I think metrics mm-hmm. I think too. parameters I think I think you know, actually dialing and um, pace heart rate pulling power. pulling the ability to race smart to know when you pull to pull back to trust that your metrics that you that will be yeah yours. because sometimes um it, like especially in the beginning like it might feel easy yeah you know and not to go out too hot yeah. no matter what to be honest no matter what distance except maybe like a 5k where you're literally hot yeah and so <laughs> but, what comes to mind mm-hmm. for racing smart is my last two ironmans uh oh, yeah. ironman cozumel and placid so mm-hmm. i had i mean and i think it comes with experience because the more you dial in your numbers the more you trust the process yeah and when i did my bikes i had the fast the, like solid bikes um and I just dialed in a number and I mm-hmm. used my head the entire time. I went through so much fluid testing and hydration testing. I remember that. Like I remember that. You stuff. had all these notes. I was dialed. Yeah. And I had like, I had the fastest spike split mm-hmm. and it was, and, and it was, and I got off like, like both races were dialed in and I dialed in so much on that bike. Um, and that's how I raced. Mm-hmm. Um, hey, but let me just also say, I mean, Gosh, how many Ironmans, how many hours of training? Mm-hmm. Like I asked you about when was, did you like remember racing smart? And it was literally last year. And yeah. I'm not saying you haven't raced well, smart before so, that. So that's the but, other thing too. Yeah. So yes, I've raced that. But then I look back at races where I didn't use those metrics. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I mean, I had a general plan of what I was going to drink and eat, mm-hmm. but I didn't dial it in as yeah. much. And again, I go back to Ironman World Championships and, and I, I, I had power numbers, mm-hmm. but that was an all, all heart rate. I was just getting off line and I, I just went there. I, I, I was just grateful to be on that start line. Mm-hmm. 
and to and to this day that is the best my, my yeah. best race ever um that and was, that was all heart I was like gonna that, say, that, that was run heart. I never even looked at my heart rate I I mean mm-hmm. I just ran mm-hmm. and I just I just ran mm-hmm. with, with a mantra in my head that's, that's, <laughs> like, that's heart. it that's it mm-hmm. yeah that, that's what I mean and I think you know one of the things we talk about with racing by your head racing with keep like if we're just specifically talking about the metrics like I talked about trust trusting Mm -hmm. those metrics and that happens through training and through practice and with a solid race plan because in terms of when I raced successfully by metrics was the Boston last year where I was injured and I had a power goal and a heart rate goal in my head And I knew if I pushed it, I was not going to make it to the finish line. I just didn't have the endurance in me from a very short build. And I just constantly looked at my watch and I just, and it felt easy for Mm -hmm. the first, like, that's the hard part, especially with longer course Mm -hmm. marathon. It's, it's just supposed to feel so effortless in the beginning. And it did. And then remember, if you listen to the podcast, that guy was talking to me for like four or five miles. Mm -hmm. And that in some ways made it go by, um, where I was like slowing down. And I had, I pretty much even split Boston, you know, just totally just click, click, click. And what, and that was the, and that was because I was coming off an injury. And the first time I also ever ra- had the best paced run was the Falmouth road race. And that was coming off just a little bit of like a hamstring strain. It wasn't anything, but I remember saying I have to go out slow mm-hmm. so I don't aggravate mm-hmm. the hamstring. And so I ended up, it was a long time ago and it was my first race <laughs> that I actually didn't go out too fast. And I just paced it so well and picked up steam and picked up steam and PR'd or whatever. And I remember finishing and I was like, wow, like an injury or like the, you know, racing smart. So I didn't aggravate something Mm -hmm. made me more successful than just going out with my heart and just being like, Mm -hmm. let's go. And so um, that I just kind of changed the subject there. But sometimes like coming off an injury can make you really race with your head because you have to be more cautious and in a long course or a race like that being cautious in the beginning and holding back is what Mm -hmm. get what gets you maybe your personal Mm -hmm. best or it gets you to the finish that's what gets you passing people Mm -hmm. in the last half of a race yeah when you say stuff like this I it it brings me back to like you want to be confidently competent in Mm -hmm. what you're doing and though in you can go into a race and you can be confident, mm-hmm. but completely incompetent. And what I mean <laughs> I by love, that I is that. <laughs> what I mean by that is like you can go in there confident, but you have no idea how to fuel, how to pace, how to look <laughs> at heart rate, and you're gonna derail. Like mo- maybe more more often than you than you want to think you are. Or you could go in there um, not confident, but quite competent. And so, yes, you have all the metrics dialed, but if you're not confident in what you can do, you're still not going to have the race of your life. Mm -hmm. But if you can go in there with your head and your heart, which is being confidently competent, I love it. like, that's where you want to get. And, um, I think a lot of that comes from experience and dialing in what you can in training. Like a lot of times I have, you know, aerobic rides, zone one, zone two, whatever, but as you know, as you start training, you know what that feels mm-hmm. like. And if you can oh, dial yeah. in your feeling and your actual analytical side. And so I guess that's the, that, that that's the thing, too, is taking the analytical side of your brain and your emotional side and balancing those out. Mm-hmm. So that's being confidently competent to me. And that's where you can get your best races. So when I say all this and I look back at my races that I just talked about where I did do well, I was still when I was at in Kona that year. I mean, I had metrics for my power. I knew exactly what I was going to eat and drink, but I didn't have to think about it. And that's Mm -hmm. being confidently competent. Like Mm -hmm. you don't have to think of all these things and you can actually race with your heart because all of that, all of those, all the metrics are, are, are done with Mm -hmm. done. You know what you're going to do. You know what your power up is. You have confidence in them. So now you can take that and race with your heart. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think where you want to be, you know, you want to be able to balance both of them. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And And use both of them. Yeah. I love that confidently confident. And you know, it's funny because it, you could show up and we have with the most fitness in the world, you could have had the best build, 
But if you don't race, if we're thinking about if yeah. saying, if you don't race smart, you talked about hydration, you talked about nutrition, pacing, mm-hmm. it does, it literally doesn't matter how much mm-hmm. fitness you have. I mean, mm-hmm. God, I mean, even like the pro races that you have been in, you're all fit. You're all fit within inches of each other. <laughs> and it's the people who mm-hmm. race super smart. I was mm-hmm. just reading um, uh, some stuff about um, the Challenge Miami, the first T, um, mm-hmm. the first T100, mm-hmm. whatever they're calling it. And the people who, uh, the, some, I think some of the male pros blew up, female pros, a couple injuries, but a lot of them were saying, first of all, I just knew if I race smart and I got if I could just make the whole race, like Mm -hmm. I would have, cause it was so hot. Mm -hmm. Like I would have, I would be successful. And it was like every there, if I just held back here, if I just picked my way through the field, you know, I think, um, I was reading something with like Sam Long who came out like so far behind in the swim. Oh my gosh, that was a phenomenal uh, yeah. uh, thing he did. He, Cause he, and especially in like that short shortened environment, he came back was like two minutes almost or yeah, he got second overall and he was behind. Yeah. I was that was an amazing race. That was mm-hmm. a well executed patient. That's what I mean. That's what we're talking about. Totally race. racing yeah. with his head, probably with his heart, because yeah. he he was basically alone for part of it. But yeah. what he said is that actually let him focus on his own race. Mm-hmm. And when you don't come off like out of the swim, like you're not chasing somebody right behind mm-hmm. them on the bike, but to be, you know, confidently competent. And so I think even at the very tippy top, the people who have the best races are really racing a lot with their brain at first. And then as we know, toward the end of it, what's the famous marathon saying, even though they're not doing a marathon there, um, Mm -hmm. you race the first 20 miles with your head and the last six with your heart. Mm -hmm. And I think that's indicative of most racing. It's funny. Yeah. I'm just, when you say this too, it brings me back to Cozumel. So Cozumel, we had our swim canceled. So we had to do a 15 second, 30 seconds between and um Dee Dee Greisbauer was was behind me and she's a very strong cyclist like she's phenomenal yeah. and she usually gets the solid ones so. and we interviewed her I don't remember but look yeah. back oh gosh it yeah, was early yeah, yeah she's fantastic and so I knew I had her kind of to like look to to determine where I was in the race because mm-hmm. there's like you know every every 45 seconds I think or 30 seconds p- people are gone so I don't know what's happening in front of the race and I don't know where I'm at she was two people behind me and she caught me at like mile 12 mm-hmm. and then she was ahead of me. And at the time I was following my metrics and I called my coach prior to the race. I'm like, I don't know what to do. I've never been in a situation where the swim got canceled. Yeah. He's like, use what you know, like mm-hmm. go with your power numbers. But when you're in a race yeah. and I'm just like, oh, and I see someone pass me that's behind me. Now I'm behind. <laughs> so part of me kind of threw out the window of my metrics. And I'm so glad I did because I averaged out exactly where I wanted mm. to be. But I, if I went with my own, my own power numbers, I probably wouldn't have pushed that hard mm-hmm. enough. And it actually put me into a position above of what I thought I was going to do. And I, I did great and fantastic. And it was still within the range, Mm -hmm. but it was in the higher end of the range. Um, and that was all, that was all just like, not, it was all heart at that point. Cause Mm -hmm. I'm like, well, I'm going to either make or break this. But it was head because you, that's the other thing with even the mental, cause we're not just talking about saying the metrics Mm -hmm. you, while you're on your bike, went went through, through. went through some scenarios, Mm -hmm. went through like we probably didn't even know it went mm-hmm. through past experiences, past race experiences, rides, mm-hmm. risks, calculations, where you knew your body was at. And you were thinking hard, yeah. probably all within the span of like five minutes. And you know, when you say that, when, you, <laughs> when I think about it, like I had my nutrition so dialed like, cause it's so hot there. Yeah. Um, and you have to, and I think that's what helped me through is I was confident so much. So in how I hydrated and yes. flew and, and, ate and drank during that whole race at that, that first lap first it's a three lap bike course people just flew off like flies because yeah. they went way too hard and they didn't they didn't dial all that in so I had the confidence that I knew mm-hmm. I could get through that um but I mean again it's it's this back and forth like like you have to have confidence in your training you have to have confidence in in your decision making like r- like races are all about decision making whether yes. it be with your heart whether it be with 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 your head, but it has to be balanced. Um, and if, if you are confident in your decision-making, then I think you can kind of 
things just roll like subconsciously, like, yeah. like uh, you, you're able to get into that position of not having to think. And that's where I like to be is where you don't have to think. And I think mm -hmm. that's, that's the balance of that competency that you want. You want to, you want to race, you want to mm -hmm. race with heart. You want to race with that, with that internal drive versus like having to crunch numbers and do all this mm -hmm. stuff. So if you have all that really, really dialed, then you can like switch over to that heart, which yes. I think gets you to that, that oh, finish yes. line in a position where you're completely racing. Like you are racing with your internal body and yeah. soul, you know? Mm -hmm. And I was thinking about with the, um, when you were talking about, it's all about decision-making mm -hmm. and no matter whether you're doing a 5k, a sprint triathlon, all the way to an Ironman or a more an ultra trail run is thinking about all the, all the things in a race that you have to think about, like people who pass by an aid station because mm -hmm. they don't want to take the 15 seconds to stop yeah. and grab a water bottle. But sometimes you got to make those decisions. That's what, and that's, know? yeah, but, and sometimes it comes back to bite you, mm -hmm. you know, um, I've seen, I mean, well, for example, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I can't remember who it was, it was two guys racing Kona. They talked about it was it was uh, I think Maka and Crowey Alexander. Uh -huh. Maybe you don't. It was no, a yeah, few it's, years it's back. probably pre Amy. Anyways, Triathlon. they were back. They uh -huh. were stride for stride, mm -hmm. and it was mile twenty five. Mm -hmm. And I can't remember if it was I, I I could be getting these people wrong, but anyways, mm -hmm. it was two guys, and one of them decided to get water mm -hmm. and at the aid station mm -hmm. and that was the mark where the other one totally was like this is my chance to get away from mm -hmm. him so he went as hard as he could and he cracked him mm -hmm. so the guy that actually was like i need to get water mm -hmm. and stuff he lost the race <laughs> because that yeah. that was the that was the elastic mm -hmm. that just broke mm -hmm. because he was able to make that gap and couldn't make it yeah and so it's these tiny decisions mm -hmm. that you have to think like can i do this or can mm -hmm. i not and mm -hmm. you know sometimes so for Cozumel, for example, I, I carried literally all of my fluids yeah. and I, I picked up a few and my bike was probably not arrow at all, but I had a great bike split. Um, but it was, it was, I was confident in that because I knew I wouldn't have to slow down. I knew I, I knew I would get the hydration I mm -hmm. needed and that's what made me have a great race. Mm -hmm. Um, but that, but that's balancing the decisions. Whereas like, I think there was a one aid station. I was like, oh, I should probably get some extra water. And I skipped it. Mm -hmm. But I was like, no, I had enough fluids. Okay. I'm yeah, good. yeah, yeah. You know, but there's, you have to make these, you have to make these decisions at the time, you know, yeah. and, and even when you have someone a hundred yards ahead of you, or like, like talking to your husband today who raced today, like he had to use groups and like, mm -hmm. he was saying he was racing with you your athlete mm -hmm. where, where, uh, you know, they, they were surging to the next group to get to the next group. Um, but then your athlete knew he probably couldn't yeah. keep doing those. Mm -hmm. Whereas your husband could, mm -hmm. I mean, he comes from a mountain bike background. Mm -hmm. He can they surge he and can pull back, surge and pull back, surge and pull back. And it helped him. And mm -hmm. so those are tiny, tiny mm -hmm. decisions that, you know, you have to have confidence that you can mm -hmm. actually do it. And, but I have seen so, so many runners and not, actually it's more only runners than triathletes. Triathletes mm -hmm. are pretty good about stopping at aid stations on runs, mm -hmm. especially mm -hmm. I've seen so many runners blow through, um, aid stations mm -hmm. and not grab anything on a hot day because they don't want to risk that five seconds. On, and then it comes back to bite them. They're mm -hmm. thirsty. They don't, you just don't realize it. Or when it's a mile 11 of a half marathon and you're like ready for your next gel and you're like, oh, I'm mm -hmm. so close. And you decide not to take mm -hmm. it. And you know where I think this comes from too mm -hmm. is possibly, well, actually probably not possibly, but I, I'm pretty sure is how much ego plays into the role, yeah. you know, like, oh, I can do this or, mm -hmm. you know, uh, they're getting passed by someone or, you know, they feel like they can do a certain pace or something like that, mm -hmm. or they, or they go into this race thinking they can run x pace mm -hmm. i mean that is all ego yeah. at some point you know if you if you don't have the confidence in it you don't have the experience you don't have the results from your training mm -hmm. ego can play a massive role that will that you may think it's your heart mm -hmm. but it's all ego mm -hmm. like so there's a balance there like heart to me is 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 having that internal confidence mm -hmm. and and being able to let go and just race and see what you've got whereas ego is I have to get this pace. I have yeah. to beat that person and I'm going to push as hard as I can. And you're, you're, you're taking your mind away, which you need in mm -hmm. order to make those decisions. Mm -hmm. Right. You know? Um, well, you're almost talking about, we've talked about it a lot. You're racing like with external factors, like yes, you're seeing externally internal, and not yeah. internally. Yeah. And, 
And that is when the head goes out the window, even mm-hmm. the heart, you're just, you're all, like you said, you're all ego, you're all external. And, but I think a lot of people don't know that because, yeah. be- because it is an internal thought process, yeah. but they need to realize where is this motivation coming from? Is it coming from comparing myself to others? That's mm-hmm. extremely external. Mm-hmm. That is nothing to do with heart. That's mm-hmm comparing yourself to others mm-hmm. like and yes and 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 that's that's the struggle we play with because we we want a place in our age group we yeah. want to win and that is comparing ourselves to others but you're not going to get there doing that by, yeah I was... <laughs> it, it, it's, it's, it's such an interesting concept uh, well I'm laughing because I was joking with um somebody last week where like I was like you know, like all athletes before a race, even us, you know, all athletes before a race, like, oh, I'm just going to go out and like, like I might, I'm just going to kind of go and see what I got or I don't really care what I do. Like this is, oh, whatever. And then after the race, they're like, like looking, looking at the results yes. and like being yes. like, oh, if I would have done this for 10 more seconds, if I would have had this much seconds on the bike, I would have placed this and this person was only, you know, and so and we all have those two little personalities mm-hmm. within us. And that's just because we're human. We are all, we're competitive. And it's okay to say you're competitive. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's okay to want to be faster and improve. That's why we do this. Um, but it's just how you handle it. I'm just thinking about, you were talking about um, a lot of it's ego. Sometimes you know, when you don't race with your brain, it's complete inexperience. Because I have um, the first half marathon I ever did. I had, I mean... I had such a good build and my coach at that point, I was mostly running by pace. I kind of heart rate. So this was a while ago and he told me paces to go Mm -hmm. out at. And it was literally my first half marathon, my first time tapering to a half. Mm -hmm. So I started running and I was like, I feel fantastic. (laughs) What is he talking about going out at like a seven 30? I, I can go faster than this. (laughs) This is how dumb I was. My first mile. (laughs) Um, oh was goodness. a 645 oh, crap that's fast it yeah. was fast and I would but now it felt great it felt and I was like <laughs> there was not even a flicker of I'm in danger yeah. I was like okay cool <laughs> and um and then by mile 10 I was like down to like an eight something I still actually had a fairly good race because I started so fast mm-hmm. but those last three miles mm-hmm. were terrible mm-hmm. and I didn't follow his race plan I don't but it was my I mean obviously I was just happy to be out there but I lost my marbles <laughs> and I also didn't even panic when I saw the 645 which had I been more experienced <laughs> I very much should have yeah. but anyway the point is that was a definite no-no and the other no-no that I had was the first Boston I ran where my coach did give me heart rate goals and pace goals. And I chose the much faster end of the pace goals for the first part of Boston. And my heart rate was so high. Mm. And I and I knew I knew this was not that long ago. I knew better. And I was like, it's fine. It's maybe the heart rate's off because it's like, you know, race nerves. But yeah. when you get to mile eight, it's, it's not, not race not. nerves anymore. <laughs> it's not race adrenaline. And um, and then at mile like 16, I I really died. Yeah. Um, and I mean I finished and it was fine, but it was a rough go of it. Um, so I have some bunch of experience uh not racing with the metrics that within my own thing but um because then if you don't race with your head it does become all heart (laughs) then you have no choice but to just gut it out um and the only thing that the thing that I have been quite good at is actually racing triathlon within the metrics Mm. um and the only time I did not it was Gulf Coast Florida and that bike, you know, is fairly flat. Mm -hmm. So I was pushing my heart rate a little bit above where it should have been. I didn't have power then. Mm. And just kind of flirting with a little bit outside the zone. Mm -hmm. And even though I had an okay run, I I did feel it. Mm -hmm. I felt it Mm -hmm. a little bit on I was like, Mm -hmm. I am not going as fast as I could. Mm -hmm. Um, The run was not what I could have done. And it literally it was only it sounds really crazy. But when you're dialed, it was only like three to four beats above like it wasn't yeah. crazy but it was enough for that long of a bike to push me into not a terrible run but not the run I wanted yeah and yeah. and that kind of taught me for the next one to stay in inside that heart rate metric which is because my zones are so dialed it was fairly mm-hmm. accurate 
um and that's experience um yeah, i was just yeah my uh, when you talk i think a lot of it comes down to experience like the mm-hmm. more that you race the more years that go under your belt you realize what you're capable of mm-hmm. And it does come with your mental mindset. Like it definitely comes with if you have confidence in yourself or not Mm -hmm. and confidence in your training. Um, It's funny, whenever I talk to my coach prior to races, I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm a pretty like, let's see what I've got. I'm going to race with my heart. I do what I do. And it's funny. He's like, look, we already know you're, you're going to do what you want out there anyway. <laughs> mm-hmm. Cause I always race by heart. And, and he always says that he said, you're going to go race by heart anyway. I said, yeah, but I want metrics. I want to yeah, know. Give it, yeah. And, it. And, and it's true. And, and, and how, and how I look at it now over the years is these metrics are targets. Like mm-hmm. they're, mm-hmm. he gives me an X, like a, a range of yep. wattage on the bike. And it's like, okay, I know if I'm not around this range, something's going on mm-hmm. because this is what I'm capable of comparatively to what I've done in training. Mm-hmm. And I trust my coach and we go through everything and it's like, okay, if I'm not in that range now, something's going on. It's, it's not, it's not anything else, but, but either my hydration or some like, like or it's really off. humid yeah. or and, and, who and, yeah, exactly. yeah, who and so I use it more of a, a check, mm-hmm. uh, like a background check in mm-hmm. terms of what's going on. So let's, so, exa- so as you were saying, so like, let's say he gives me a wattage whatever I'm a, I won't say wattage but but like a number and I'm not even close to it mm-hmm. okay so I have I have this thing okay am I hydrated how much have I mm-hmm. eaten um you know am I is is the wind playing a role am I doing too much of a low cadence or high cadence like I, I go through this thing in my head just like I don't even think about it but like it just naturally happens now mm-hmm. and then I'm like okay all those, all those are fine. Now what? Okay. Well, I'm just having an off day. And I think over the years of experience, you have to be okay with that because sometimes when I see athletes go into that and they can't hit them, it completely derails them. Mm -hmm. But that's where you have to have a solid hit on your shoulders, but then you also have to race with heart. Okay. You know what? These, these ideal targets that I wanted to do, they're, they're not happening today. Mm-hmm. Throw them out the freaking window mm-hmm. and go race and ha- enjoy what you can. Yeah, whatever like, you can get from get that race. In, yeah, and mm-hmm. and I've had races like that where, you know, things just were not lining up to what they should be or could be in, in my head or what we, pre- or what we pre- preemptively planned. And you just throw it out the window and, and you have to have the experience, but you also have the confidence in yourself that it's like, and be okay with that. Like you have to let go of the ego. Yeah. It, and, and the confidence to be like, all right, I'm, I'm not a shit athlete. You know, like I just, this something's is going on. Yeah. Something's going yeah. on. Whether, you know, it doesn't like t- out of 365 days of the year, like, yes, you can taper, you can, but who knows on that one day you're racing, whether your body is going to say, this is our day. Mm-hmm. It, it sometimes, sometimes it's a crapshoot. I mean, mm-hmm. you can do everything in your power to have the day you want and you can hit the metrics. So, you know, you can even say you can hit your heart rate goals if you're running and you're running by heart rate and the pace still isn't there. I had an athlete today race a half marathon in humid, hot, hilly Marco Island, Florida. And we were going because it was a half. She's got Boston coming up. I was like, let's see if we can go for this time. Let's do this pace. But we knew the dew point was going to be high. And she won't mind me saying this. She was actually on the podcast, but, um, you know, one of the things, her last race was not great because she had gut issues Hmm. and going into this race, her biggest fear wasn't pace. It wasn't a time. It was that her gut was going to be okay. And she was a little bit off the time today, but it was very, very humid. And she felt great and she had zero gut issues. She missed her time by a, like the time we were going for by a couple minutes, which literally doesn't matter. She was, she, she is so stoked for Boston because meant she came, she went over this hurdle of, she made it through a race without a gut issue. She did some really smart things last night and this morning for fueling things mm-hmm. that she tried and a couple new things she tried and she raced confident because sometimes when you have that kind of um anxiety that can affect all sorts of things but she went into it you know she started to, to race and she put it out of her mind and there were so many other things that came out of that race besides a time goal Mm-hmm. that she is just over the moon today. And so I was like, we just had the best race. <laughs> and <laughs> she, the reason why she was slower, it was hilly. And the dew point was 
astronomical down there. Um, she's going to be in her nice surprise in Boston. I hope I hope I'm not <laughs> jinxing it. I hope we don't have some crazy humid hot day in Boston, but for the Boston Marathon. But um, I guess what I'm saying is, you know, like you were talking about when you don't hit that race target in one way, you find other wins, um, mm-hmm. and and that's how you also race smart. Well, and I think that's what racing is. Like, yeah. he, like I think a lot of newbies and a lot of people that have yeah. that anxiety, that race pre race anxiety. Mm-hmm. You know, we we saw it last year with so, with some of your athletes that were new to triathlon. Yeah. You know, all this anxiety about over it. Like they gotta, they gotta, they gotta hit, kick back and think. Like, like, why do I enjoy racing? Mm-hmm. Like, what is it about racing that I enjoy? It's the unknown. Like, you mm-hmm. have to be okay with not knowing. You can go into any situation with the best intentions, the best plan, the best thought process, everything organized. But you have no idea if it's going to happen or not. But you can put your best foot forward and have the confidence that it will. And obviously that plays a massive role for things on the other side and the outcome of it. Mm-hmm. Um, well, like you see a lot of professional athletes in all arenas. Like if they if they have that internal confidence, mm-hmm. you just know they're going to do good mm-hmm. because they've just checked all their boxes in terms of what they can and cannot do. But they have this almost calmness about them they that that, like uh it was Kobe Bryant he was he was doing it doing an interview um and he was talking about confidence and uh, what did he say it was it was more of like like uh, just uh, how did he say it I can't even remember I have to find it Mm -hmm. but it was it was it was more about not going there to show yourself, but it's just this internal confidence that you have, no matter what happens, you are just, you're, you're putting it all out there and, and, and that's it. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, I wish I could, I could come back to it. I'll have to find it. You have to find Um, it and look it up. Yeah. But it it was, it, it really moved me in a sense that to race with your heart and your brain, you have to, you just have to let go almost. Mm -hmm. And, it sounds it sounds counterintuitive to actually using your head, mm-hmm. but all of that stuff happens unconsciously. Mm-hmm. You know, like you go in and you're able to use all the parameters, all the metrics, all the understanding, all the all the race day decisions and brainstorming and like making all the decisions in the race. All that should come automatically if Mm -hmm. you're continually to think about that there's no way that you're going to be able to let go and just race with your heart and Mm -hmm. I think that's that's my thought process in this in this whole talk right now is you have to be able to use both Mm -hmm. to have the best the best race you can only race with heart and be smart and if you're smart about it Mm -hmm. and have the best race if you're able to tap into that but you don't want to just always be thinking about that stuff because that means you're you're yes. out of your heart. And that's and that's what I also try when we talk about race planning with athletes. I get so nervous when we we talk mm-hmm. about targets and you give mm-hmm. them targets and but I always make sure to say but when you're out there it's you and you and you, you're it's and you. you it's yeah. your decision making. Yeah. So if you want to go for it, if you want to ignore that metric because like like you know you can do mm-hmm. more, then we do more. Like mm-hmm. I mean you give them heart rate parameters or whatever, and then they go and they blow by them and they pull it out of their ass. And I'm like, holy crap. So, if, so, so that, that brings me to like personalities. Yeah. So I have athletes that are very analytical Yeah. and I have some that aren't, Yeah. But there's a lot of people that really hold on and, and want, and want mm-hmm. the analytical side. And I think you know who I'm talking about. Yeah. In, one, in one sense, she's she is so analytical. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't, I don't, <laughs> I'm going to say her name, but I won't. Um, we're good friends. <laughs> <laughs> but she's so analytical that over the last couple of years, I've 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 proven to her yeah. that she herself can make those decisions. Yes. And race with heart. Yes. And I think that's what made her the jumping point. Over. Yes. And I think. And I, I know I bring your husband up, but it's because yeah. it's your husband and he's mm-hmm. here. He thinks a lot like me, but he's much more analytical than mm-hmm. me, but he can tap into that heart mm-hmm. so much. And that's why I really enjoy racing mm-hmm. because every race he does, he just pulls it out of his head. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I know the hell did but he I do that? And talk of one of the things the racing by heart that I'm talking about is kind of here is your gut and the, the ability to take the risk. Yes. To, to go outside risk. the mental, yeah. it's taking the risk and it's going by your gut and being like, I oh, can do yeah. this. Yeah. And I, 
like my coach gave me these paces or these metrics and and yeah, some people take the risk right from the beginning and mm-hmm. got it through. But if there's a certain point in a race where you're just like, let's like let's just go. And you take a risk because, I mean, I, there are a couple athletes where I'm like, let's just see if you blow up. You have mm-hmm. never blown up in a race. Mm-hmm. This race, you have nothing to and lose. people are scared of that. Well, yeah, because... Because when you do it, it's like, you're like, whoa, yeah. <laughs> you're like, okay, you're, but you're out of that comfort yeah. zone. And I think all those analytical things keep yeah. you in this little box. Yeah. You know? And I'm not saying blow up. Like we don't want you to DNF. It's not like we want you to go out at your 5k pace on a marathon. Mm-hmm. Um, that's not what we're talking about, but the risk to find somebody in the crowd who's like, and they, they see, you see them running and you're like, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm going to try mm-hmm. to keep up with that. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to keep up that person in my sight. Mm-hmm. And I may be just a little hot, but I actually am feeling really good. Or going a little bit off script, I said, I, I want to see if you blow up because we actually don't know where your limit is. Yeah. I, I'm, we think we know where your limit mm-hmm. is, but your brain is so much more powerful than we know. That's why you yeah. can, that's why you are dying at the end of a race. But as soon as you see the finish line, you literally take off. And like, I think that's what your, your husband has is mm-hmm. he's able to gut through something and yeah. just he's, he's okay blowing up if he yeah. blows up. He has not blown up yet, but I'm yeah. going to make, <laughs> you're going to make him well, blow like, up. Actually, and then it, it also reminds me, so Injuries are not always fun, no. But they teach you so much. So I'm so one of my athletes last year, Lake Placid. You were there, with yeah. Her. She is such an analytic person. She's the one I'm talking about. Um, she could not use those metrics because we we didn't even know if she could finish that race. And I I, I, I almost in, fell off the saying, race course when I when saw I her saw running. Her. I and was like, "What are you she, doing?" <laughs> and honestly. If I have to be brutally honest, I did not think she was going to finish the race. And I didn't, I, I didn't I, think because, she was going to run. No, I mean, she was in the heart locker. She was very, very injured. And um, yeah, talk about racing with heart. And I think it was one of the best races she could have ever done for herself because mm-hmm. she proved to herself that she had to race with heart, that mm-hmm. she raced with heart that entire race. Mm-hmm. And we, and our thought process of going in, it's like, well, we don't know if you're even going to be able to run off that bike. So freaking give it your Give it your all yeah, on that's the freaking bike. She she gave it her all on the bike and then had to run a marathon. After. Yeah, but she did. <laughs> she amazing. did. It, she did so great. But yeah, no, I know. And yeah. so and it actually taught her. She's like, oh, maybe I can go a little harder on the bike. Yeah. But um, but yes, and that is. I mean, there are so many different ways to race with heart. I and that's it's uh, like you, pushing yeah pushing the limits a little bit. Like mm-hmm. everyone has a ceiling that they mm-hmm. think that they can do. Yeah, and the metrics tell you, okay, you can run yes. at this X pace. Mm-hmm. But it's just where these metrics are coming from like that like that's not your entire being Mm -hmm. that's not yes that's the workload you've done but there's a whole other aspect there's that that heart Mm -hmm. side of things that if you can tap into that i mean that's where your extraordinary like potential is and that's that's where you find an athlete you know Mm -hmm. you can do all the training in the world It, it was just like you were saying like all these pros are at the lights um at the race we're all fit as fit as all hell but who makes it to the finish line first the one that races with all the heart Mm -hmm. and all the ability to tap into Mm -hmm. everything Mm -hmm. in a very quiet confident way they're not they're not they're they're it's it's why i love racing Mm -hmm. because every race is so different and Mm -hmm. you learn so much about yourself and you learn like that those parameters that you set yourself inside your head thinking you can only run this or or do this you can you can totally get rid of that you know and and see what you have but you have to you have to have the ability and the desire to do that and be okay with failing mm-hmm. and you can fail like what's that saying fail 12 times uh, fail fail like fail fall seven, seven times get, get up, up eight. eight yeah yeah and, and you have to be okay with that yeah and when you know and i think we've all have races this is going to sound terrible but where we actually haven't raced with any heart we are out there and you're doing the work mm-hmm. and there's a little piece of you sometimes that doesn't want to be there. And I'm going to be honest, that was the first part of the Kona bike for me. I literally mm. was, I was b- kind of by myself and I was out on the Queen K. I had like 90 miles left and I, I was not in it. Mm. I was like, all just like watching my heart rate, doing my drinking and my eating, you know, <laughs> and it was fine. I wasn't actually wasn't in pain then, but I was like, not in it. Mm-hmm. And I was, I had to, I almost had to like, I was like, I talked, I gave myself a talking to, I was like, pull yourself together because you're at Kona. Mm-hmm. You're at Kona right now. 
and you're doing the thing. <laughs> I was like, you, you like go, you're doing it. Yeah. Like go, go get, race. get your shit together Amy, <laughs> yeah. and be grateful. Cause that everybody knows it's yeah. attitude of gratitude yeah. and that's racing with heart. I did pull my shit together. And then I really had to race with heart on the run. Cause I was dragging my left leg around like Quasimodo or something. But, um, <laughs> but I was, that was all hard at that point. Um, there was no race plan anymore, but, um, but yeah. And the other thing about, you still managed to do an amazing, I did, yeah. <laughs> I'm still reaping the, uh, lovely yeah. rewards from that race, <laughs> but that's okay. You got to laugh or you'll cry. <laughs> and then, um, you know, the other thing racing with heart is I was actually thinking, I never talk, you talk about my husband a lot. I never talk about him. Um, he, his first mountain bike stage race at the trans Pyrenees over in Spain, he got super, super sick like the third or fourth, like oh, yeah. throwing up all night. And he had, he couldn't keep anything down. He had this mountain bike stage race for like a day and a half where he couldn't keep anything down. And he was like, it was, it was like the hardest thing he ever did. And that was all heart. And mm. so sometimes mm-hmm. you have to just, you got to fight, you got to fight. And that is just how bad do you want it? And that was all heart. And he came back, he looked like a, a skeleton when he I've never seen him so light I was like what happened to you he I don't think he could eat for like two days and he oh, stays wow. raced through it he was like so sick I don't know what he ate but um but yeah and so when stuff like that happens when and you know yeah we all go into the hurt locker in races and that's where the heart comes out that's that's that you know I do I tell I mean maybe it was Des Linden who said that with the marathon but I tell all of my athletes that it's like finding a way, you know, I relate it to when I had, I mean, I can only relate to what I've experienced in life, but yeah, like when I had Lyme, like people were saying, oh yeah, you need to take a year off. I mean, I took some time off. I had oh, to, yeah. but like you find a way mm-hmm. or when, when something goes wrong in life, um, someone tells you no, like I don't take no for an answer. We know it, this. It, <laughs> We do know this. We find a way. <laughs> we but, do find a way. I, I think it's a personality trait. I mean, obviously it's a it personality is. trait, it's... but like, I just don't give up. Like I give up when all else is, is like, I just, I mm-hmm. like, we talk about grit. Of course we've it talked about grit, grit but, but there's, yeah. it's different than grit with stuff like that. Even in a, even in a race, it's not, I mean, we all have grit when we race, but there's just something deep inside of us. There's just this. It, I mean, yes, grit, but just you can give in to the crap that's happening, or but you, you don't find your find a way to get the whole it. never give up. Yeah, and it's not even. I guess I mean I know it's closely related to grit, but like there are times where I'm not gritty. <laughs> like, no, me too. You, you know, yeah, like definitely. I'm just like Ugh, I don't want to do that. I think we all are. Yeah, like, like, but trying to get myself to the swimming pool. <laughs> There's no grit involved. I but sit on just, the pool deck for like 20 minutes. Yeah, not giving up, and it's not. It's like not taking no for an answer, but not stopping until you find, I used to call it the heart of the matter. And, Mm. you know, like you circle around it, you circle around it until you get to the heart of the matter. And for us, the heart of the matter is the finish line. Mm. And that's what we're going for. And we're we're going to find our way to get there, no matter, you know, how we can, which is why a DNF is so fucking painful. I just cursed it. I'm sorry. Because it, it doesn't mean you're not fit. It's because you didn't get to that finish mm. line, the thing, that heart of the matter. And, and we know that we, when, when athletes DNF, my athletes, any athletes, it's, it's always for like the biggest reason, mm-hmm. you know, it is never inconsequential. It's never just like, oh, like my quad started to hurt. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's not like, ooh, I was breathing kind of heavy. And I think those, those DNFs can completely derail a person Mm -hmm. but it's those athletes or people that can like okay yes they have their little pity party and it is pity party yeah believe me i've had many pity parties (laughs) um but it's like it's like you 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 feel the feelings you see what's happening but then you you bounce back because Mm -hmm. because you know there's more to it than that you know you can finish you you know you can get there and that's how you make change like that's why I, w- I was saying like sometimes it sometimes having an injury or having an illness or something like that is one of the best things for people mm-hmm. because they realize everything can't be perfect mm-hmm. and, and and you have to find your way and f- and f- figure out how to get back to being healthy h- getting to the end of the race like there's there's so many different things and it gives you that grit mm-hmm. like 
like years and years of experience of racing, I think, uh, I mean, has shown me so much about who, who I am and, and being able to transfer that obviously to life too. But for those people that, that like, I, like, I think of my mom, she always says, Oh, I don't, I could never be competitive. So I, I just don't believe it. I just mm-hmm. do not believe it because I've seen her. Yeah. I've seen her run. I've seen her play games. I've seen her, you know, really try hard. Like she had breast cancer and had to go through all that. Like she has That's grit. grit. Everyone has grit. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a matter of stepping out of that little box that we all put ourselves in mm-hmm. and seeing what our potential is. And, and um, being able to find that potential is getting rid of all the interference experiences you have in life whether that be your lack of confidence comparing to others like like all of these things that can set you back like to to really see your potential you have to get rid of those Mm -hmm. and that's where I think experience confidence working on your mental mindset working on um you know if you have those types of races where you don't finish or something happens like being able to step back from it like and not not having that define you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think the bottom line is, in many cases, it's never the fittest person that gets to the finish line first. It's the person that races the smartest mm-hmm. and with heart. Mm-hmm. Especially, I mean, you've experienced that many times. Mm-hmm. The tippy top, yes, of course, the fit people will like the very tippy top will get to the finish line first, but not always. I mean, so you know, racing smart. It, you know, using your head, using your heart at the right times mm-hmm. to get you to race to your best. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's what's going to bring you success. And the whole part of it, too, is you never know what's going to happen. And that's what's exciting about the races. Yeah. Like, like there's been races I've held back and I, I wish I just said, screw the metrics. Yeah. Let's just go for it. Yeah. And see what happens. And mm-hmm. yeah, if I fail, I fail. But I sure gave it my heart and I gave yeah. it my all. And I think, I think there's a balance there, but that, but that balance can never be controlled. Mm -hmm. Like, like people want to go, people want to go into a race, expect like thinking they're going to have the best race. They're going to, they're going to, they're going to podium at their, on their Mm -hmm. age, but, but you don't know any of that. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think realizing and accepting that you just don't know, Mm -hmm. you can put your best foot forward, no matter what experience or what you're going through. But at the end of the day, you have no idea what's going to happen. And you have to be okay with that. If those people that accept that mm-hmm. and just let it go, I mean, that's that's what I try to do every day. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean th- that's what I want to do every day. No, no, that's every day. No. Do yeah. all my races go that way? No. But that's the, that like, like when you experience that, it's that's like, the flow wow. state. Yeah. That's the flow exactly. state. When you're racing yeah. with your head and your heart and you're not, Thinking. You don't even know it. Yeah. You don't even know it. You're just experience. Like the road goes by on your bike. Like I've had it on the bike and races yeah. and all of a sudden you're like, oh, that was, that was five miles, yeah. you know, and you've eaten and you've drank, like it's, that's the flow state. And that's, and that comes with experience, with practice. And like you said, what do you call it? Confident confidence. Yeah. Confidently competent. Confidently competent. I like that. Yeah. All right. Well, Thank you so much for listening, everybody. We will see you next week. Please send us an email at iracelikeagirl at gmail.com. Have a good day. Hey, everyone. Thanks for listening, and we hoped you enjoyed it. You can find us at amywoodsfitness.com and angelanath.com. We'd love to hear from you.